We got a good match, Brian. It took Cody to do it, but we got a good match. Gold, Jerry, gold is what we got. I must admit, I would have I would have done the finish a little different, but I was conflicted, and I've come back, and I've thought about it again, and maybe he was right all along. But let, let me go to my notes. I like the package on Cody and MJF because it told the story. There's distinct personalities. There's a heel and a baby face. They made the cage mat, the cage itself in the match dangerous and important. They talked about it. It's like suddenly I went to an outlaw mud show and pro wrestling broke out. The lowering of the cage looked great because they slowed down, took the time with it. And <clears throat> that always looked good since Vince got the fucking budget to do that. Instead of having the fucking ring crew put the sides up with fucking zip ties. Um, they clearly and plainly stated there'd be no escaping the cage bullshit, which has always been bullshit. And they were going to do real cage match rules, pinfall or submission only no other way to win. Um, so that, that was obviously a positive Wardlow looks great. He physically, he looks like a star. He looks like a beast. Cody came out with Arn and Brandy. Eh. To me, that's too dangerous an environment to bring your wife. Wouldn't it? If you're going to go have a fucking fight with some fucking evil guy that's twice your size, are you going to let your wife come along? She's going to get on TV one way or another. Look, they just announced their new figures, their new action figures, and she's somehow in the first set. <clears throat> Want to guess which figure is going to be the lowest selling figure? Well, anyway. Um, but yeah, otherwise than Brandy being out, Arn being out was great because MJF was out with Wardlow. They start the match and wouldn't, you know, Cody actually knows what the fuck he's doing. He's a member of the Rhodes family. He's in Atlanta. He's against a fucking beast that they have to try to make a threat. He's in a cage, which they can use to establish as dangerous. The first AEW cage match. And of course he gets color. Which, if you have a cage match and you don't have blood, it's fucking ridiculous. And it, I don't believe, is a pretty good job if, if, if it was that phony bullshit fake blood that the WWF tries to use and other people try to use on occasion. This was done the proper way. And he fought from underneath the whole time. You can tell Wardlow's green, but Cody sold and he fought from underneath. He sold, but he didn't die. He stayed alive. Um, I said, boy, that cage, they should have hooked it down at the bottom or something, or it should be a little bit smaller because instead of being thrown over the top where you could hit the cage and bounce off of it and go back in the ring, it was just bowing out. And, and poor Cody was, I'm sure he didn't plan a few of those fucking flops all the way down to the apron, but you know, it, it was too much room, but otherwise than that. And then Cody makes one comeback and it was the perfect comeback because he just hit something. Boom, went to 10 punches in the corner and hit the elbow and Wardlow gets the nut shot. So he got him up, made sure he was still alive. And then Wardlow pulled a rug out from under. That's all he needed right there to stay in it. So Wardlow could get some more heat. And then they do the spot with MJF teasing, trying to get Arn to slam the door on his fucking head. Like he did to dusty years ago. <clears throat> and, of course, Arn thinks about it for a second and then it hits MJF with a shot, and that gets a big pop. Um, then Cody makes a bigger comeback and uh, does a little bit more this time, but Wardlow stops him again and hits him with that big dive off the top. I'm not sure that guy should do a swanton, but nevertheless, <clears throat> now the team is in need, and MJF hands the ring in. Now, of course, it would have been fantastic if MJF had won 15 weeks in a row on television previously by knocking a fucking sucker out with that ring, and that way it would actually be really over, but we have to allow for modern wrestling, and that if something happens once, then they're going to fucking capitalize on it. But he hands the ring in that he used against Jungle Boy last week, and Cody gets it. This is pro wrestling. The Sheik dropped his pencil. Oh, my God. Now, Bull Curry's got the fucking pencil or Pampiro Furpo. 
And the people go crazy over that. MJF is, is going crazy trying to climb into the cage. Brandy hits him with a chair. Anybody else would have sold the chair. MJF didn't sell it because it's a girl that hit him and he knew better. He jumped down and confronted the girl and was about to punch her lights out when Arn dumped him over the rail. But I guarantee you any other heel would have sold that chair for Brandy and it would have killed him dead in four o'clock. I didn't like Arn doing that to him. I, I don't think anyone should have gotten their hands on MJF. Uh, you know, it's well, it's a few weeks ago he got thrown into the pool. He yeah. is the heel that Cody's trying to get to. Exactly, he, but he shouldn't be made the, to look weak at all. I agree with you there. But if it was a choice of selling a chair for Brandy or getting dumped over the rail by Arn, I'll take Arn. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, two wrongs don't make a right. But I agree <laughs> with you on that. But he shouldn't. Have, neither one of those things should have happened. But it, they had they had to shoehorn a spot in for Brandy. It was obvious, right? So there it was. Here's what I had an issue with first. Cody boots the guy, drops the ring. He gets the ring. He fucking pickles him with him, and it turns pickles him with it, and it turns right into the crossroads. One, two, kick, and I'm like, no, Newman, fuck. That should have been it. I'll explain why in a second. But that was not it. He kicks out. So Cody goes to the top, does the moonsault off the top of the cage, knock the fuck out of Wardlow on the way down, it looked like, <clears throat> and covers him one, two, three. I wrote at the time, incredible, but no. Because the thing is, with that, you change the meaning of the finish. If it had been boot the guy while he's putting the ring on, get the ring, punch him with it, and then hit my finish, then what Cody would have done was we used to call it a, a baby face fuck. The heel normally fucks the baby face, right? But in this case, the baby face fucks the heel. He hit him with the gimmick and then hit him with his finish when he was stunned. So it'd be, it would be a fuck, and it would leave Wardlow with an out. It would, it, he, he wasn't beaten fairly. There could always be an asterisk next to that. <laughs> but once that that has failed and then you hit him with another move, the momentum has changed and it no longer becomes you fucked him, it becomes you beat him. So in this case, he beat Wardlow instead of fucking him. And the move got a huge pop, obviously, but it didn't fit the fucking story and the personalities involved. And I would have, I was upset about it at first. And I would have thought, that Cody being a Rhodes, he would have won this in that fashion with a babyface fuck, but then come out of it with some type of injury or handicap, disadvantage, a body part, something is going into the match with MJF, something's wrong, he's got a weakness. But in hindsight, <laughs> when I saw the way that they've replayed it and that they've played it up and everybody, I mean, it was an incredible move. For the same reasons that I didn't like it to begin with, now I think I'm liking it more because... It was like the old days when I said that the first David Von Erich Memorial show at, at Texas Stadium was a, a, a match that needed a stadium because they were going to draw more twice what they could get in Reunion Arena for Flair and Carey in honor of David. Every succeeding year after that, it was a stadium that needed a match. They had a stadium show booked and they had to put a match in there to make it worthwhile. That's a completely different fucking way of looking at things this move was he cody after i saw his off-air promo which everybody went crazy about he wanted to do that move in atlanta he wanted to get the video he wanted to create the buzz over the spot he had to do it off the cage because there's no way you can get up that high any other way so this was his opportunity so instead of making the finish fit the match and the program he went for the big moment and he put his move in where it didn't necessarily belong because he felt that the moment and the pop and the buzz off of that, Cody doing it off top of cage in Atlanta and also the personal enjoyment, to be quite honest, was more important than actually what should have happened in the match. With that audience, he's probably right. Because, yes, it would have made more sense and Wardlow would have been protected as, as more of a monster and it fit the fucking picture and it's logical wrestling. But as we've seen by everything else that those people had stuck down their fucking throats that night, 
They don't care whether anything makes sense or not because they're just there for a fucking hoot. So normally Cody makes sense. In this case, he went for the fucking pop and the buzz of the big fucking move. I don't hate it as bad as I first hated it because now I see what he was doing because with that audience, it doesn't matter to begin with. But that's that's what I thought of the match, though. He did a great fucking job, and it was obviously one of the better things that's ever been on AEW television. But as we've seen, that's unfortunately, except for Cody, Jericho, and MJF, a very low bar to fucking hurdle. You know, as you're saying that, I'm uh, looking on Twitter. Someone had just sent this to me. Apparently, in terms of the ratings, the quarter-hour ratings, the three top people in AEW are Jericho, Cody, and MJF. You think? And Moxley. Moxley's in there, too, actually. Well, he's had a lot of WWE television, so people know who he is. They haven't made the same mistake with him they've made with their alleged homegrown guys. And the off-air promo, by the way, of Cody. In the same promo, we went from the outhouse to the penthouse. I didn't like the whole thing. I liked the end of it. I thought the end of it was fan-fucking-tastic and should be on television. I think the beginning of it, if I'd have been in the back, I would have fined Cody when he came back. Because after that fucking... Go back and watch it now that I've said that. Don't just, if they play a clip, watch the whole thing and, and see exactly what he said. After that cage match, he's bleeding. He's gone through all that. He's flown off the top of the cage. He's beaten this beast. He gets up, he gets the microphone, he thanks the production crew. He thanks the fucking crew at the building. He says, this is the best episode of Dynamite yet. He's an executive vice president doing a rah-rah. It's like a fucking curtain call. Yeah, what what about our staff and our crew? What about our fine cast, folks? The first minute was fucking ridiculous and should never have been said by him in public. And then... He does an incredible, emotional, heartfelt promo about falling in love with wrestling because of his dad a hundred yards away in the back of the old fucking Omni there on the Baker Street entrance or whatever the fuck. The point is, tells the truth, tells a true story, is emotional when he does it, gets a great fucking pop. That should have been on television. They should show that clip. But he, once again, he took people out of it. Then what about greatest episode of Dynamite ever? Which means, oh, yeah, boy, didn't we do a good job of producing this. And what about our crew? Did anybody else see that but me? I thought that was odd. But obviously the fans there didn't care because they know that he's an executive vice president. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, they, they don't. That's the thing. They don't have to make any kind of sense for those people because those people are just there to see wrestling as a fucking joke and a hoot. But they still get worked by the good stuff because the good stuff makes sense. And they can follow it instead of just watching this fucking video game bullshit. But every time you do something that gets people halfway emotionally invested in this shit as something serious otherwise than just this fucking, I'm going to watch some guy stick his hands in his pockets and do stupid bullshit. Then the guy, even the guy that gets him into it, then says, oh, hey, what about our cast and crew, folks? And boy, what a great episode. We're always going to give you our best. Fuck, can anybody just be serious and do what this shit is supposed to be? I it, it I swear to God, it would be like if fucking Jerry Lawler and Terry Funk had a fucking pull apart at the Louisville Gardens in 1981, double juice and 10 guys on each man trying to pull them apart. And then after they fucking drug Funk to the back, Lawler got on the microphone and said, boy, I really want to thank you guys for coming out tonight. What a great show we had. No, he was cussing out the fucking state athletic commissioner, was threatening to fine him if he didn't fucking stop the goddamn pull apart. Lawler said, if you think it's over, you get your ass in here and try to stop it. I'll knock you out to the state athletic commissioner. And the people were fucking being held back by the fucking by their jackets and their ties and their clothing from jumping in the ring to get in the middle of it because the scene was chaos and everybody was afraid there was going to be a riot. That's wrestling. Not this fucking hokey bullshit. So they do it and then they don't do it. That's all I got to say about that. 